Hello and welcome back to Detailing and the Beast. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Nicety paint depth gauge. I'm inside today because the garage is absolutely freezing, so bear with me. I will be doing some shots on the car, but I'll try and do as much of this inside as I can. Let's crack on, I'll show you how this works. <laughs> So the gauge itself comes in this plastic case and in there some protection for the for the gauge itself, uh, a little instruction manual. We get some blocks, non-ferrous and ferrous, so magnetic, non-magnetic, non-magnetic and magnetic base materials for calibration. We get plastic shims. These are again for calibration, different thicknesses, so we can put these on top of here and, and calibrate the machine. You don't get batteries with this. Um, it takes two AAA batteries and then the gauge itself. So this is the Nicety CM8806FN. Uh, price at time of filming is around about 180 quid. Um, I have used this a fair bit now, um, different cars, different jobs, and it does seem very reliable. I was doing that cardinal sin of polishing blind beforehand. Um, very dangerous, so definitely worth the investment, especially if you're gonna be doing other people's cars. So the gauge itself, it's got these three buttons across the front, and it's also got a push down sensor on the bottom, that's where you take your readings from. So if we push down on here, we can see that that goes and reads zero on an FE, ferrous metal, that's a, a magnetic metal. We've then got these paint thickness shims here, they mimic paint thickness, they're just plastic. Um, so the first one we're gonna we're gonna use just against just to show you how this works is 3.9 mils and 98 microns. So you'd put that over the top there like so, and then take a reading. 98. So anyway, I was expecting to have to calibrate that then, but obviously not. So that has calibrated correctly. However, if you do need to calibrate that, so you've got a 98 microns on there, right? And you do that reading, and it comes back as I don't know. Let's say, let's say that reads 102. If you hold the memory button down, it will beep, and then you can do the the plus and the minus to up and down that to what it needs to be. This is how you calibrate the unit. So at 98 microns, we press memory, it bleeps again. Jobs are good. We then take the reading, and it measures back at 98. That. You'd have to repeat that with numerous shims, um, and that is how you calibrate the unit. The buttons on the unit themselves, so I've just gone through what plus and minus is and what the long, long press of the memory button is. The, the microns and mils button there, so you can change between microns and mils, so you know we had the, the shim at 98 microns or 3.9 mils, that's what that is. Um, I tend to work in microns, but it's up to you, you can work in whatever you want. You've then got a mean, minimum, and max on your current set of data. So if you see that 22 in the top corner, that's 22 readings that I've taken um, just while this gauge has been on. Um, and the mean of that is 75 microns, which is an average. So my minimum was zero when obviously we did the, the calibration on the base plate. And the maximum being 181, which is probably something that I've just done on another on another shim. But you can see there, so if you were doing this on a panel, for instance, you could go along and you could do, I don't know, nine or 10 readings against one panel, and you could work out whether that panel had had paint, for instance. So if you've got a, a really big difference between your minimum and maximum, then you'd know the panel had had paint. The other button on here is the flip button, so you can flip it round. So this is the screen, so you can press the flip button and it turns everything upside down. Useful for when you're doing readings on cars like that, so you're putting the sensor onto the car so you can still read it upside down. For this purposes, we'll turn it back. We've then got a memory button. Now, that, that relates to this 22 in the top corner. As I said, that's 22 readings. This will do up to 99 measures in memory, but it does auto-clear when the unit turns off. So in 90 seconds, the unit will power down automatically, just a battery save. Um, and there's no way of then coming back and reading that memory. It, it's only whilst that unit is on. So we could go back into memory here and we could use, so that's memory one, two, three, for instance. So if we know where these readings are on a car, then we can obviously go in and we can, we know where that is. However, I would prefer to note them down on a piece of paper. So for instance, draw out or get a drawing of a car. 
and mark down these numbers on that drawing um, because as I said when this does turn off you will lose that memory of up to 99 readings. Now there's also this SI here as well. Now there's SI mode which is single read mode which is you press it down it takes a reading jobs are good and right so that's a single reading. You've also got a CO mode which is a continuous measurement mode. Um, I'm not sure why anyone would want to use that from a detailing point of view. What it means is you can push that down on a car and keep the sensor on the car pushed down and then you can drag it along the paintwork. Yes, I did use the word drag. Drag it along the paintwork and all the infliction that may cause and every two seconds it will take a measurement. So you are, I, I don't know why you wouldn't go just go bing, 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 bing instead of just dragging it around the car paintwork. Um, it even says in the instruction manual that it is prone, that mode could be prone to damaging the sensor, so you could screw your own machine by doing that mode. I, I don't get why they put it on, but it's there anyway. Um, so if you know of a reason why to use that, let me know, but I just can't see it myself. Uh, so we've gone through the calibration, we've gone through the modes, we've gone through the buttons, we've gone through what's included. So I'll take you through and show you on the car now. So we're now in the garage, I'm just going to show you how I would do paint depth gauge readings across uh, this front driver's door side. So what I would normally do is, again, this would be the whole car, it wouldn't be just a door, but for, for purposes of demonstration it makes sense. So for a door, I would segregate that up, so I'd do nine readings on the door, and then maybe three across the uh, upper part of the door. Uh, so we'll go and make them readings now, and then we'll come back and mark them on the page. So then we just transfer that drawing that I've just shown you. I mean, you'd obviously have a, a drawing of a, of a whole car rather than just a door. And you can download things like that, templates off the internet. But what I'd then do is transfer that drawing into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine readings. And then maybe one, two, three along the top edge of the door card just there. So I'll go and do them now. And then we can transfer them to paper and see what we're looking like. So now I've marked on the readings, uh, what we've just taken onto this piece of paper, and it gives us a much clearer indication of what's going on on this door. So we can kind of see that the paint thickness does vary. I mean, it's, it's you know what, it's around about the same level across the board. But you can see that the, the paint here is its thickest, and then it kind of feathers out towards the edge and towards this side of the door. So we would be more comfortable removing top coat microns from here rather than say somewhere up here along the top edge um, and along along here towards this top corner is relatively low I mean I took four or five readings around here and they dipped from around about 100 up to 120 radiating that way so the closer to this edge you've got to be more careful um, and then obviously around this door frame here coming down here by the edges you've got to be careful as well um, and along the top edge but here along the bottom edge seems all fine and we would be good to remove material from there now I know a lot of you are thinking of how do I know how much material to remove well that does vary I know it's the old cliche of it depends but the best way of finding that out would be to take measurements from inside the door sill um, so I can go and show you that now so if we take readings from here inside the door jam you can see that's 84 84, 80, we'll go some down here, 98, 90, so it's roughly, it's roughly around 90 microns. So that is normally an area that, that manufacturers don't put as much top coat on, so you, you've got the, the base coat in there and then a little bit of lacquer, so you know, you know pretty much we're certain that on this vehicle, that 90 microns would be your lowest that you would dare take this down to. So that was my review of the Nicety Paint Depth Gauge. As always guys, thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.